Grace and peace to you from God our Father and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Did you hear? Respect. Those are the words of a very tired wife. But they are also the words of an admonition that we have from the Apostle Paul as he writes to the Romans in chapter 13 in our second reading this morning. He's talking about give to whoever, whatever you owe them. If respect, then respect. So now, there are probably people in your life right now who you find it very difficult to bring yourself to respect. You may feel that simply by respecting them, you may be somehow showing lack of respect for even yourself. The person or people in your lives who may have authority may be to you so vile, so distasteful, so pathetic that you have nothing but contempt in your heart for them. Perhaps you can identify with someone like Nancy Pelosi who tore the manuscript to pieces of Donald Trump's State of the Union address back in 2020. Or maybe you identify with those people who are putting the Let's Go Brandon stickers on the back of their cars. Or maybe you identify with Colin Kaepernick who felt like he needed to take a knee during the national anthem. Or maybe you can identify with those New York City police officers who turned their back to the mayor they did not respect. Or maybe, maybe you have this same feeling about people in your immediate life. Maybe this is the way you feel about your boss at work. Maybe it's the way you feel about um, people in your, in your company, people in your neighborhood. Maybe it's the way you feel about the president or legislators or Supreme Court justices. And maybe it's the way you feel towards your own spouse. If that is how you feel today, I have some words from the Lord for all of us. And they come from Romans chapter 13, verse 4. And I would like for us all to look at that anew once again. Romans chapter 13, verse 4, you'll find it printed in your bulletin on page 6, page 6 of your bulletin. On page 6 of your bulletin, I'd like to go to Romans chapter 13 and focus in on verse 4, verse 4 there. Why don't you go ahead and grab a writing tool um, while you're at it, and um, I'll read this for you. For the one in authority is God's servant. For what? Your good. God's servant for your good. Please circle those words, your good. Your good. See, earlier, in this letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 28, Paul writes this, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So God can work good through all those people that you may find in your life today who you just can't respect. God can work good through them. The challenge is, is that it is very hard to see the good that God is working through these people. It's difficult because when you watch the news at night, it's not good that you see of them, but only bad behavior. We see leaders of our nation falling down sometimes falling downstairs. We see them making gaffes. We see them caught in all kinds of scandals and schemes. We see white police officers shooting unarmed black men. It's even worse in an election season during the campaigns. A CEO of a wellness website wrote in 2016, 2016, the tone of the latest election cycle 
from the primaries to the general elections, from the local to the national races, was worse than any we have seen before. Demonstrations of, listen to this, demonstrations of disrespect by candidates and their advisors toward their opponents. Non-stop media coverage of all the neg negativity. An endless pitting of one group against the other became the new norm. It was rare to see or hear about positive events on the news or in social feeds. Criticism and pessimism overshadowed any signs of optimism and hope. We don't see the good that God is working for us through those in authority. We don't see the good, and very often we don't feel the good. We don't feel the good. So here's what was written in Hebrews with regard to how we might feel sometimes about what is happening um, with people who are in authority in our lives. The writer writes this. This is from Hebrews 12, verses 9 and 11. We have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained up by it. So what Mr. Mayhew was doing by being my math teacher in my sophomore year did not feel good. I hated math, and math created a lot of academic pain for me in the form of Ds and Fs that I got in my homework and tests. But still, I had to respect a man like Mr. Mayhew, who gave up his time and energy to try to teach my classmates and me how to do well in the subject of math. He did what he did for our good. And yet, the classmates of mine, that sophomore year in my math class, did not show Mr. Mayhew any respect for the good he was doing for us. In fact, it was in the first semester that year that they would do something so disrespectful, I felt I was gonna have to do something to help him. Because deep down inside, as much as I was miserable in that class, deep down inside, I knew that Mr. Mayhew was trying to do good for me. I knew that God does good for us through his servants. We may not be able to see that good or feel that good at times, and yet God is doing good for you and me through his servants. His servants. Go back to Romans 13 in your bulletin there, verse 4. Find where it says servants, God's servants, and underline that. Underline it twice. Because this is something we really want to embrace today. We really want to give thought to people in the Bible that God called his servants. People like Moses, do you respect him? People like Elijah. People like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who God saved from the fires of a furnace. Servants like Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus is God's servant for your good. Jesus. Acts chapter 3, verse 13 Peter's talking to the crowds in Jerusalem, onlookers, and this is what he says. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant, Jesus. Jesus is your servant for your good. Jesus is God's servant to you for your good. 
Jesus is a servant to whom we owe respect. Jesus, the servant of God, is worthy of our respect because of the disrespect he endured. I'm going to say it again. Jesus is worthy of our respect because of the disrespect he endured for your good and my good. Jesus was stripped so that you and I could be clothed. Jesus, back, his back was striped so that by his wounds, we would be healed. On the cross, Jesus was cursed so that you and I could be blessed. Jesus was made sin so that through him, you and I could become the righteousness of God. Jesus became a sacrifice so that we all could be saved. And amen, church. Jesus died and was buried so that you and I could be raised to everlasting life. So Jesus is this servant of God who through the disrespect wins our respect. Through Jesus and his becoming vile, his becoming distasteful on the cross, his becoming pathetic on the cross, he becomes someone to whom we give our respect. When I saw Mr. Mayhew in my class helping us, he reminded me of this kind of servant of God. Mr. Mayhew was a very, very gentle, soft-spoken, very kind and warm-hearted man. He told some corny jokes, but he put up with a lot of stuff from all of us in the class. And I guess because of that, students in the class thought they could just walk all over him. People came in late for class, and they left early. People just got up to go to the restroom anytime they wanted without asking permission. One day, one kid was just beating a, a rhythm on his desk while the teacher was trying to teach. One day, I saw a guy slip out of class when the teacher had his back turned to the board. And as he slipped out, I saw him take a piece of duct tape and put it over the strike plate hole so that the door latch would not engage. And then the next day, Mr. Mayhew stands up in front of the class, kind of somber looking, and just talking about how sad and disappointed he was that someone snuck into the classroom while everyone was away and took all of the chairs and all of the desks and piled them into one giant stack up to the ceiling. When I heard this, folks, I was I was indignant. I was so upset that the class would treat this nice man this way. So I decided quietly that I would tell Mr. Mayhew what I saw. It's just disrespectful for what they were doing to him, but it's also disrespectful for what we, as a human race, did to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But... Jesus, in his being disrespected, does us good. In the disrespect of his nakedness, of the wounds on his back, the, the, the death on the cross, the burial on the ground, God does us good by giving us the promise of everlasting life. Jesus is the servant of God who does everlasting good for all of us. And so we respect him, amen? We respect Jesus, amen? amen? So because of Jesus, we see in any servant of God, anyone who's in authority then, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, 
we can obey them and serve them wholeheartedly because of our love and gratitude for Jesus who endured it all for us. This is what, this is what Paul writes then in his letter to the Ephesians. This is chapter 5, verse 6. He says, obey them, obey these people in authority, not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people. So suddenly, we respect people in authority. We, we, we see in them Jesus, and we serve them as if we're serving Jesus Christ our Lord, who came not to be served, but to serve us and to give his life as a ransom for many, for all of us. So we, we find ourselves then able to serve our bosses, able to respect people in government, our president, our legislators, our Supreme Court justices, even our spouses. Paul, wives, Paul says, respect your husbands. And husbands, Peter is saying, respect your wives. Although they may be physically weaker at times, respect them because they are co-heirs with us in the promise of glory that we have through Jesus Christ. So we, we because Jesus is the one who is the servant of God, we see in him we see through him all those others who serve in our lives. We even respect the servants. We can respect those people who bring us our meals in the restaurants, who clean up after us, who pick up our trash from the streets, who wipe our noses. We respect even them because Jesus was a servant who washed our feet to show us the magnitude and the extent of his love for us. Mr. Mayhew was such a servant. He was a person who took all kinds of abuse from um, we students as he tried to teach us math, as he tried to train us up, as he tried to do good for us. So when, these, when they did this act of criminal mischief in the classroom, I was pretty upset. And so when I told the teacher, the teacher then went and brought in the authorities. He brought in the school resource officer. School resource officer, wore on his ankle, he wore an ankle holster, a pistol. It was concealed, but everybody knew he was strapped. Everybody respected that school resource officer. They respected him when he came in the class and took the kid who put the tape over the door and his accomplice and took him out of class. Everyone respected him. Everyone was afraid, but not me. What I saw in that authority coming into the room to bring in justice, I saw the good. I also felt the good because there was justice now for this poor teacher who was taking care of us every single day. Authorities hold no fear for we who are obedient to Christ, we who respect them, only for those who are disobedient. So today Paul is inviting us, admonishing us to show respect. Where we owe respect, give respect. Where honor, give honor. Jesus Christ is a servant of God, like Moses, like Elijah, like the great prophets, like Paul himself, servants of God, who God has put in our lives for our good. So often, we struggle to see that good. We see their faults and their failings and the problems they have. We see their sinfulness. So often it's hard to feel good because the things they're doing with us to train us up may be uncomfortable or painful at times. But then Jesus comes suddenly as a servant of God on the cross appearing vile and distasteful and pathetic. And yet in this, being worthy of our respect by bringing us the good of righteousness, and salvation, and God's blessings. So as we see all people who are called servants of God, 
we in respect for Jesus can ultimately respect them. So I want to share with you a passage that I included in the bulletin this morning um, from Philippians chapter 2. And I wanted to look at that with you um, for what we are being encouraged through Jesus, um, humility um, to res in respect for one another. And um, you'll find this, this passage um, printed for you on page 7 of your worship folder there. This is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Just like that resource officer walked in the class and took control of things, Jesus walks into our world as a humble servant and takes control of us. He casts out the devil, removes sin, and brings us to everlasting life. Therefore, we give him all of our respect. After the resource officer took these two guys into custody. From that day on, everybody respected Mr. Mayhew. Everyone knew that behind him was a greater authority. As we know, behind every authority that serves us, there's a greater God, a God who gives us his servants for our good. Amen. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.